Welcome back to another essential movie. Today we will be taking a look at a story called Ender's Game. You will be remembered as a hero. A fight in the skies is depicted in the movie's opening moments. The narrator then tells us that the world was attacked 50 years ago by an alien force known as the Formix. With the sacrifice of their greatest commander, saved them from complete annihilation. Andrew Ender Wigan, the main protagonist. He currently appears to be engaged in combat in one of the simulations. Two figures that resemble military personnel are watching his combat. We overhear them talking about him. We discover that Ender is exceptionally intelligent, a great tactician, and aware of his surroundings in combat. A speaker claims that he is the one. What does he mean by that? Two individuals who are observing him believe he is ready for the final test. They want to see his reaction to being rejected. He was called to the infirmary, where he was informed that the monitor will be taken out of his head. Ender is shocked and wonders whether he has been terminated from the program, but the nurse makes no comment. The surgery was quickly completed and he was told he should go home. Back at home, we meet Ender's family, his kind and compassionate sister Valentine and his brother Peter, who makes fun of him all the time. During dinner, Ender is very sad, and as his family tries to comfort him, a sensor at the front door informs them that two people are outside and want to enter. It turns out to be the people who observed him, Colonel Hiram Graff and his colleague Major Anderson. They are there to let him know that he has passed the last exam and has been accepted in the Battle Academy. He decides to go and that's where his journey begins. Together with the other kids who passed the exam, he travels to an outer space station where he will begin his training. Immediately upon arrival, they were placed in their dorms. During their stay in the academy, they meet Sergeant Dapp, who is in charge of their squad. Ender gets to know several of his classmates from school, including Bean, Eli, Bernard, and many others. In their first lesson, students study a video of the legendary hero Mazer Rackham, saving the entire planet from the first Formix invasion. In the video, we watch Mazer who realizes that they are losing the battle badly. He makes a risky and irreversible decision after the defeat of Earth's armies. He steers his spacecraft in the direction of the mothership and crashes into it, obliterating it in a massive explosion that disables all the other ships at the price of his own life. We see their education continuing. The battle room is soon introduced to the students. It serves as an arena for team competition in a zero-gravity environment. The game's rules are explained by Sergeant Dapp. You are split into equal teams and placed in the zero-G area. Everyone owns a handgun that can stun the target or the area of the body that is struck. A shot to a limb awards one point, whereas a shot to the chest awards six points which completely immobilizes you. However, regardless of the points, if one of the teams is successful in getting one of their players unharmed through the base door of the other team, they win. A good performance in a competition best reflects your skills and whether you are ready to progress further. We notice that Ender now plays a certain game every night before going to sleep. Colonel Graff and Major Anderson are still keeping a tight eye on him. It turns out that the game Ender is playing is a mind game that Anderson set upon him to test his mental stability. The Colonel and the Major soon come to the realization that Ender is far more advanced than his generation and promote him to the senior squad. He is assigned to the Salamander Army. We meet several new characters, including Dink Meeker, a tough but fair guy, Petter Arcanian, the only girl in the Salamanders who is very kind to Ender and the leader Bonzo. He is a very irritating person. He considers Ender a skinny, useless, and untrained schmuck. He orders him to stay in the back and as far away from the rest of the team as possible in every fight he participates so he cannot disturb them. Petter offers to help him improve his aiming in his spare time. They train together for a while, she teaches him some very useful tricks, and they become good friends. Bonzo doesn't like that Ender is slowly being liked by the other team members and intends to get rid of him as soon as possible. The day of the first battle has come. The team gathers at the entrance to the battle room, where Bonzo explains the tactics they will be using today. He fully excludes Ender from the plan and continues to urge that he stay outside the arena so that he doesn't distract them. Obliged to obey their leader's orders, they enter the room without Ender and begin the fight. Petra and Dink's group are making every effort to win back the game. With well-practiced maneuvers, they are able to take out a number of opponents, but they quickly find themselves outmatched. Ender doesn't stop to consider his options before rushing in to save Petra. She follows his instructions and pushes him toward the opponents. Thrown towards the enemy base, he manages to surprise the opponents and immobilize the majority, thus enabling his team to win. 
Bonzo is furious because Ender made him look like a fool. Meanwhile, Ender continues to play the mind game every night. However, on one of those evenings, he had a pretty unusual situation. In the game, Formic appears and seems to be attempting to communicate with him. He then takes the appearance of his sister and flees, compelling Ender to follow him into a mysterious building where his brother is waiting to attack and murder him. Ender panics and quits the game confused, wondering what this could mean. He continued to live at the academy and kept improving. Graf invites him to his office one afternoon. He informs him that although he is impressed by how quickly he is making progress, he has also noticed that he and the team leader are becoming more at conflict. He suggests that he make him the leader of his own team. Ender is surprised but accepts the offer. He thus becomes the leader of the team that was disbanded four years ago, the Dragon Army. His team is joined by some familiar faces. There are a couple of his Salamander colleagues, including Dink, as well as a lot of his old friends, including Bean, Eli and Bernard who have finally been promoted to senior cadets. We learn that the command school is pressuring the academy to make a choice quickly because they are running out of time. He arranges a duel in which the Dragon Army has to fight against two opponents at the same time. In the rush to prepare for the fight, one of the team members sprained his wrist, so Petra was assigned to the Dragons as a replacement. The fight seems unfair from the very beginning. However, Ender comes up with an excellent tactic to quickly achieve victory. Despite being a newly formed team, they all have faith in Ender to do the right thing. He makes a formation so that all the members are arranged in a circle around a lie. They push each other to the other end of the room, acting as his shield from the gunshots. It was a very risky tactic, all or nothing, but in the end they managed to win. Everyone celebrates happy to finally see Bonzo lose the match. Colonel Graf invites Ender and tells him to get ready for a flight. It turns out that they are going to command school, located near the home planet of the Formix. They took it from them 27 years after the first invasion. Here, Ender will begin his final training. The next morning, he meets his teacher, who introduces himself as Mazer Rackham. What? Yes, you heard me right. Turns out he didn't die in battle in the first invasion. They review a video of Mazer's fight, the same video he watched on his first day at the academy. He opens the safety parachute and jumps out of the plane. But why did the other aircraft attack him? He tells Ender that he didn't crash into a random ship. They watch the video again. Now Mazer clarifies that there are motherships. Formics themselves are very similar to ants. The queen ant rules all the other ants. If you destroy her, all the others are done too. Their enemies work on the same principle. Ender goes to the simulation room where he is to test their theory and take command of the fleet as commander-in-chief. But he will not be alone in this. In the room, to his surprise, his best friends are waiting for him. Petra, Bean, Eli, Dink and Bernard. They are chosen. The most intelligent children of the world will lead the war. Ender takes the main command, while each of his five friends is given the leadership of a specific group of pilots. And so they begin. The first simulation was successful. They won the first battle. They continued to train hard. They worked tirelessly, with hardly any sleep. They went and suffer losses. The further they go, the more difficult the battles are, but they are also more and more trained and work more and more as a team. After days and months of practice and preparation, the day has come for the last simulation, a simulation of an attack on the Formix home planet. They are ready, confident in themselves. As they do every day, they enter the simulation room and are ready to start the graduation fight. But this time, something is different. Bean tells Ender that they have an audience today, there are a lot more people in the control room than usual. Captains and generals of all stations, as well as the chief strategist of military operations. Why are all these important people here? Is it just because of their latest simulation? Colonel Graf tells them that they can begin. They run the simulation and begin. Under Ender's command, Petra manages the MD-500, a device for molecular detachment, a weapon of devastating power. When it hits the target, a chain reaction occurs that destroys the molecular bonds, leaving nothing behind. They are slowly approaching the planet. As soon as he strikes the first blow, all the Formics start to counterattack. We are witnessing an epic battle. Gunfire and explosions are everywhere. However, Formics are countless. Ender recalls the tactics he used at school. He orders all the pilots to form a circle around Petra's cannon. Everyone listens to him, rotating their positions according to his demands. He tells Petra to target the planet. They want to destroy all the motherships at once. Everyone in the control room is on their feet. The situation is increasingly tense. 
The pilots are fighting with their lives to give Petra one shot, the one that will end it all. She takes aim and hits the planet. They did it. A chain reaction is set in motion, and the entire planet is completely destroyed. All Formics are destroyed. Ender is overjoyed, they managed to win their last simulation. We see the people in the control room, and they are also happy, they are really happy. Ender and the whole crew are confused. The simulation did not close. We still see a destroyed planet. And that is the moment when we realize the dark truth. It wasn't a simulation, it was a real battle. The war was over before it even began. The colonel runs into the room and loudly informs them that they have won. Ender starts to panic. This is not what he wanted. Why did anyone tell them that it was real? He realizes the hard truth. He exterminated an entire species. His conscience starts to bother him. Graf tells him how everyone will remember him as a hero. But Ender is convinced that he will only be remembered as a killer. He screams that he will have to bear the responsibility for this genocide. Realizing that they cannot calm him down, they put him to sleep. Petra stays by his side all night, waiting for him to wake up. Ender is dreaming, but the dream is very familiar to him. He sees the Formix in front of him, as if trying to talk to him, then he turns into Valentine and runs into a strange building. Ender suddenly wakes up, he understood. He runs out of his room. The dream he dreamed he had already experienced in his mind game, and the strange building, he had already seen it. The command school is located on a planet that belonged to the Formix before they took it over. He saw the building when he first came here, it was right across from the station. He runs into her. It is the same as in the game, as in a dream. He explores it and finds a small shell in the center. It looks like a caterpillar cocoon. And then he saw, right behind the cocoon, the Formic from his dream. We learn that he hacked the game and was trying to communicate with Ender the whole time. He seems to be dying, and his entire species is gone. Ender realizes that in front of him is her child. He swears to her that he will protect him, and find a new planet where he can settle and rebuild his species again. I recommend this movie for all sci-fi lovers out there, it has something for everyone. Thanks for watching another essential movie recap. Please like and subscribe.